Although she resided predominantly in New York, Anna Delvey remained detached from America and lacked a fixed abode. Instead of buying or renting an apartment, she favored a lavish lifestyle, moving from one hotel to another without raising suspicion as long as she could afford it. Operating on a tourist visa with six months validity, she periodically returned to her native country for visa renewals, all the while harboring ambitious plans for the future. Unaware that her grand aspirations would lead to ruin, Anna's status skyrocketed when she checked into a boutique hotel in the upscale Soho district, exuding an air of wealth and entitlement that commanded attention. Booking the entire month at the hotel, she projected an aura of opulence, inspiring the staff to overlook the absence of a credit card on file. Her lifestyle mirrored that of a celebrity, with extravagant tips and designer outfits that far exceeded the average person's monthly income. Unquestioned by those around her, Anna cultivated relationships with elite figures, including Nefertari Davis, a concierge at the hotel who was captivated by Anna's allure and generosity. Despite her European accent and apparent wealth, Anna's origins were shrouded in mystery, leaving others to assume she hailed from a wealthy German family. However, the truth would soon come to light. In the meantime, as long as bills were paid and tips were plentiful, Anna's financial dealings remained unquestioned, though her hotel payments were conspicuously overdue. As Neff recalled Anna's words, it was evident that Anna sought companionship rather than mere information from her concierge. This wasn't unusual for Neff, who often found herself lending an ear to guests. However, their interactions never crossed the line into genuine friendship, a fact Neff failed to realize as she remained oblivious to the danger lurking beneath the surface. Anna's generosity knew no bounds, as she freely handed out $100 tips to everyone from Uber drivers to restaurant staff. She spared no expense, hiring a personal trainer for a bargain price of $4,500 and living a life of luxury that suggested she had inherited millions from her parents. Her lavish spending and noble gestures earned her a favorable reputation among the staff at the 11 Howard Hotel, who eagerly vied for her attention in hopes of receiving generous tips. Always eager to help Neff, Anna treated her to extravagant outings and hosted elaborate dinners at upscale establishments like Le Suku. These events were attended by CEOs, artists, and celebrities all carefully selected by Anna for their potential to further her ambitions. Neff found herself rubbing elbows with the likes of Macaulay Culkin at these gatherings, though she lamented missed opportunities to ask burning questions. Their friendship blossomed to the point where they embarked on a trip to Italy together to attend the Venice Biennale. Anna's request for Michael to make travel arrangements using his credit card raised eyebrows, but he complied nonetheless. After returning from their trip to Venice, Michael found the experience with his enigmatic friend, Anna, rather peculiar. Despite Anna's penchant for paying with cash, she made no mention of reimbursing him for their expenses. Michael, accustomed to such situations, shrugged it off, given his comfortable financial situation. Anna spared no expense for her extravagant birthday bash, enlisting a PR firm to handle all the arrangements. She ensured that the guest list was brimming with familiar faces, including Michael. The party was a resounding success, but trouble loomed on the horizon. Days later, Michael received a call from the event organizers seeking Anna's contact information, signaling that she hadn't settled the bill. It was a wake-up call, revealing cracks in Anna's facade of wealth and sophistication. Rumors about Anna's background swirled, with speculation ranging from her father's diplomatic ties to the oil industry or antique dealings in Germany. However, the truth proved to be far more elusive. As scrutiny intensified, Anna's mysterious source of income became the talk of the town, casting doubt on her true identity. Meanwhile, Anna pressed forward with plans to establish an exclusive art club, the Anna Delvey Foundation, enlisting a creative director to help realize her vision. Despite her grand aspirations, questions lingered about her financial stability, especially in light of her unpaid bills. As she scouted locations for her venture and envisioned lavish renovations, 
The glaring discrepancy between her spending habits and her unpaid debts raised eyebrows. Anna realized she needed to secure a loan worth millions of dollars, but how could she provide the necessary collateral? With her assets located outside the U.S., obtaining such a substantial loan seemed improbable for a newcomer without any established connections. Fortunately, Anna found assistance from a well-wisher who intervened at this critical juncture. Her financial partner, deeply entrenched in her intricate schemes, aided her in acquiring the desired club for her purported art gallery. In an email, he cited Anna's significant personal assets, some held in a trust with UBS outside the U.S., as justification for the loan. Anna confidently assured that she possessed ample assets to fulfill her repayment obligations. Amidst speculations about her background and source of wealth, Anna's enigmatic persona fueled gossip and intrigue. The mystery surrounding her income only deepened as she failed to settle her debts, sparking growing concerns among those in her circle. Undeterred by scrutiny, Anna pressed forward with her plans to establish the exclusive Anna Delvey Foundation Art Club, enlisting a creative director to oversee its branding. Despite lingering doubts about her financial integrity, she located an ideal venue at 281 Park Avenue South and embarked on ambitious redesign plans. However, Anna's financial maneuvers raised eyebrows. While she claimed access to substantial assets, her unpaid bills cast doubt on her ability to fund her extravagant ventures. Yet undeterred by these discrepancies, Anna explored alternative avenues to secure the necessary funds. In a bid to raise capital, Anna adopted unconventional fundraising methods, hosting lavish parties and courting wealthy individuals whom she believed could provide crucial support. Among her guests was Martin Shkreli, infamous for his involvement in pharmaceutical price gouging and subsequent incarceration for securities fraud. Despite her efforts, questions lingered about Anna's true intentions and the legitimacy of her financial dealings. Anna seemed to be a ubiquitous presence in social circles, effortlessly navigating conversations with individuals from various backgrounds. Martin, a figure of national renown, felt overshadowed by her charisma and social prowess. Yet little did he know that Anna had gleaned lessons in fraud and deception from him, lessons she harbored plans to employ as revenge. However, as with all deceit, the facade couldn't endure indefinitely, and the truth was bound to emerge. Neff, privy to Anna's frequent interactions with lawyers, observed a pattern of dubious financial maneuvers. Despite attempts by legal counsel to caution her against inflating the value of her ventures, Anna persisted in her attempts to manipulate the system. During a dinner outing with Neff, Anna's facade of opulence crumbled when she attempted to settle the bill with over a dozen credit cards, all of which were declined. It was a sobering moment of realization for both women, signaling the onset of financial troubles. Anna's precarious financial situation became increasingly apparent as she struggled to settle debts and make payments. Despite enjoying the perks of a German Harris at the 11 Howard Hotel, where she failed to provide a credit card for incidentals, her financial delinquency soon became evident. Her promised wire transfer of $30, thousand to the hotel went unfulfilled, leaving mounting debts and strained relationships in its wake. Facing mounting pressure from the hotel management, Neff reluctantly broached the subject of payment with Anna, hoping to prompt a resolution. However, Anna's lack of funds rendered her unable to meet her obligations, prompting a desperate bid to stave off eviction. In a bid to buy time, Anna resorted to threats of purchasing web domains in the hotel's name, employing tactics reminiscent of her mentor, Martin. Fleeing to Morocco with companions, including a personal trainer and videographer, Anna's attempt at escape was short-lived, with financial woes following her even overseas. Upon her return to the U.S., Anna continued to evade her debts, changing hotels to avoid confrontation. However, her financial house of cards eventually collapsed, leaving her homeless and reliant on the goodwill of others. Even in her hour of need, Anna's charm and manipulation continued to exert a powerful hold over those around her, a testament to her enigmatic allure. 
Released on bail after securing legal representation, Anna's brief freedom was short-lived. Arrested again in Malibu, she was swiftly extradited to New York to face a litany of charges, including grand larceny and theft of services. Denied bail, she found herself incarcerated in Rikers Island, awaiting trial and facing a potential sentence of three to nine years. As details of her true identity emerged, it became evident that Anna Sorokin had spun a web of lies, fabricating tales of wealth and privilege. Born in 1991 and hailing from a middle-class family in Germany, her extravagant claims of offshore assets proved to be entirely fictitious. Despite her predicament, Anna appeared unfazed, even relishing the attention garnered by her exploits. In an interview from jail, she remarked on the experience as a sociological experiment, displaying a cavalier attitude towards her incarceration.